Hello everyone. The following is a conversation I had with the incredible German guitar luthier Antonius Müller as well as with his son Felix. When it came to the end of 2022, last year, uh, it was finally time to pick up this incredible instrument that Antonius was building for me. Um, and I thought I might ask him if he would do an interview and just answer some questions about his life of guitar building and, and just being a guitar maker in general and all of the peaks and valleys that follow. Um, his story is really incredible and we had a great conversation and I really hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. So first I thought I would just ask you, when did you start building guitars and, and why? I started building guitars, uh, I had an education what started um, in 1976 uh, in a factory, guitar factory, uh, but there was a, a small workshop inside with a master who uh, was educating some students ah. and I was one of them. It was a shop of uh, Hopf, ah. it was a well-known uh, German brand at that time. <clears throat> and. Uh, the reason why I started uh, was because my music teacher had a good relationship to Hopf because of the instruments of uh, orchestra, what he is leading. Um, he was conductor in a youth orchestra where I was playing. Oh, what instrument were you playing? Uh, beginning was electric bass and then electric rhythm guitar. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when I was uh, 10, 12 years old. Wow. And uh, when I became uh, 14, 15 years old, um, I was looking for, for an education mm, what has something to do with music. Right. Of course. Sure. Uh, my first, my dream was uh, to get a uh, sound engineer. Mm, okay. uh, but the, the way at that time here in Germany to study it, it was a very long and hard way. Mm -hmm. And you had, before you uh, have to study uh, um, for the uh, sound engineer, you uh, have to do an education. Ah, like a degree. Uh, like study ah. music or s have a, uh, something what, what have with music, with music to do. Yeah, I see. And uh, <clears throat> I asked my music teacher when he's going next time to Firma Hopf to ask if they educate something with music. Right. Like, Anything, uh, yes. Like salesman or something ah. like this. And he came back and he said, they are looking for a guitar maker this year, a uh -huh. student of the guitar maker. Wow. Like an internship where you just help out a little yes. bit. And, and he said, I gave them the best words of you, uh -huh. uh, go there and, and I, guitar maker, guitar maker, I was yeah. 14 years old. Right. I don't know what a guitar maker was. Yeah. Yes. And I went with, with my father, I went there and I met Dieter Hopf, was the, the chairman yeah. at that time. And he was going around with me in the, uh, in the whole factory, showed me everything. And he asked me, I think seven times, he asked me, do you still want this? <laughs> and I said, yes, yes. Yeah. He thought maybe you, it was like, this is too much work. Does, do you too like much doing dust, this? Too much loud in the factory. Right. Uh, whatever. Right. Yes. And I was always saying, Yes, I want. I want. Yeah. Yes. And then he said, uh, "Okay, you can start next year when you're 16. Uh -huh. When you um, uh, absolve the school, the school uh, you can come and can start with." with wow. Here, yes. And how many years did you work at that shop? Um, completely five years. Um, yes, a um, bit more than five years. But in between that time, I had my uh, military job to do. Ah, okay. In Germany at that time, you have to do 15 months uh, mm. for the government, for the military. I see, yes. okay. And I had the luck uh, to be a part of the orchestra <laughs> <laughs> yes. as an electric guitarist electric and a uh, drum wow, okay. player. Yes. And so I had three years of, uh, as a student at ah. that uh, factory and uh, half year as an uh, examinated student. Sure. Then I did my military uh, job and then I came back. And a half year later, uh, this factory was going down and uh, firing 
most of the guys, mm. and I was the youngest, I was fired at first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah. I went to a uh, small workshop uh, guitar maker. It's, it was uh, Reinhold Seifert. He built also high class uh, classical guitars. And uh, I started there and met my uh, later colleague, Uli Albert. Ah, there okay. Again, because he was working, he was learning there and working there. We knew each other from uh, the school. From, I see. Uh, uh, we had one, one day in the week we had school together, right. with all these guitar makers. Right. And uh, so we became friends, yes, of course. Sure. And uh, after more 10, 12 months maybe, uh, Reinhold Seifert had no work for, for both of us. And he said, I can't pay, uh, you have to go. Ah. So then we... It's when you started your workshop together, yes? Yes. And okay. then uh, <clears throat> I had three decisions. Uh, first, to do something completely else. Right. Um, or to go back to the orchestra. Mm. Okay. To learn a woodwind or a brass instrument. And be a part of the orchestra as guitarist and maybe as a trombone or something else. Uh, or uh, to make for myself, with Uli together, yeah. a workshop. Because at that time um, in Germany, all these factories, we had four, five, six factories in, sure. in western part of Germany, um, and they, they went down. Ah, they, they closed. They all went out of business. They sure. were, were all closed. So there was no chance of a job. Only right. a music, maybe a music store for repair right. uh, a job, but or for a seller. But this was really not interesting for me. Right. I want to work it else. Yeah, sure. This, I I was I was uh, really thrilled when I started right. my uh, education. Sure. I was thrilled more and more to to make a good guitar, a really yeah. good guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so. so when you were working at the factories, did you get to? Did you have that experience of like hearing what the instrument sounds like for the first time and feeling like proud of it in a way, or was it only one part to your? Work? Uh, interesting was um, I was a lousy handcrafter, ah, okay. I, but I had a good master. Okay, who showed me a lot, sure. and uh, I, I, I took his whole nerves. Because I'm asking, 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 uh, uh, showing, is it right? Is it right? Right. Yeah. He was crazy about this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, about the sound of the guitar, uh, from the beginning, I had my own idea. Mm, sure. I had my, really my own idea about what I think what a good sound is. And the sound of the guitars what were made in, in our area. Right. It was not really my taste. Ah, so you knew maybe some people really liked a particular guitar and you were like, no, I, yeah, it, not it, it was not my thing. Yes. What was it usually? Was there like a certain quality that you were like, I don't like this and you wanted like deeper basses or... Um, so, these guitars were um, a bit sounding like they tried to be loud, mm. but very aggressive. Okay. Aggressive. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Not, yeah not, not, uh, no, uh, not round, not soft. Right. They were very, mm, how to say. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah this is, this is a good way to describe it. Was it. And uh, I was missing the singing in the, in the sound of that guitar. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, when I was um, maybe 10, 12, year, 12 11 years old, uh, my school music teacher, when I was at school, uh, brought us uh, an LP from uh, Andres Segovia, uh -huh. and uh, I, he I heard it. And right. first, in the first moment, I thought, oh, "Oh my God, there are maybe minimum four guitars." <laughs> <laughs> but the sound, the sound was amazing. Yeah, like, really amazing. And maybe this is still how you my, started developing my ear. <laughs> and these guitars, what what I uh, what they built here in the area, they was quite different. Ah, it was quite right. different. And uh, so it, this it came later. Right. This, this all, uh, yes, it's a long well, story. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, how long was it before you started um, actually being able to try really high-end instruments, like well, the, the Hausers and such that Segovia played? Um, 
I started from the first moment to make high class instruments. Mm. But and I, I showed them to guitarists, to shops, and they looked and they said, Okay, I know where you came from. Uh, oh, sure. <laughs> it sounds like this. Right. And I was yeah, really disappointed because my, my handcrafting, I think it was okay at sure. that time. Um, but the sound, maybe people had the same imagination than myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> there was one guy in uh, Karlsruhe at that time. It's a German uh, city okay. in the south of Germany. Uh, his name was Rolf Eichinger. Um, he was a friend uh, of uh, Marine Montero. And uh, he had the shop in Karlsruhe, Zumpfgeige, mm. it was the name. And uh, the shop uh, exists until today. Oh, okay. yeah, but not with him, with his follower. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I went there to offer my guitars, and he saw my handcrafting and was okay, and he was playing. And um, when I tried to ask him, do you want to, to buy one? Sure. <laughs> He said, oh no, at the moment not, um, not interesting. And it was again there. And the same. Yeah. But the third time when I came there, uh, we had a coffee, an espresso. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Tony, now we met each other since uh, some, some time. Uh, I have to tell you, I think your guitars sound like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a bit disappointed, but uh, oh. the next was, why? Right. What do you think? <clears throat> and he said, I will show you what I think what a good guitar is. Right. And he showed me uh, a guitar from uh, Antonio Mario Montero, mm. a guitar from Daniel Frederich. Um, I don't know. There were maybe three or four guitars. <laughs> and he was a good player. And he played, uh, when he started playing uh, the first string of the Marine Montero guitar, I was going like this, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> this, that's it, <laughs> that's it. I never will, I, I, I thought, I could not imagine that I ever will reach this right. quality, this level. Yeah. My God. Wow. Yes. And uh, in the following time, I had a really, really good relationship to, to uh, Rolf. And uh, Rolf studied guitar making with... Marine Montero oh, in the okay. late 60s, beginning of the 70s, during uh, some periods he had to be I there. Um, he, he brought Marine Montero guitars to, to Germany oh, okay. and published them a bit. So, and he had a lot knowledge of the old kind of guitar making, like it was mm. in Madrid at the changing of the century and so yeah, on. Sure. And I learned a lot about glue, about uh, uh, fitting, uh, right. about using tools in this way, uh, about clamping, fitting things together and so on. And the whole system, I, I, I recognized that nothing at the Spanish guitar is done for nothing. Ah, right. Everything, right. Has, everything what is done has a sense. I see. Yes. Wow. And uh, I think that is what, because in, in Germany, um, the tradition of guitar making, it belongs a, a lot of manufacturing factories, something like this. Sure. And they uh, try to do things easy. All right. So, All the same without like little detail adjustments. Yes. And, and uh, this, uh, Knowledge from uh, Rolf, right. it was for me great, yes. Wow. So you uh, feel like you were getting much better really much fast. Much better, yes. Wow. But uh, at the same time, I had to work and earn money. Sure. Because I had a girlfriend, we, we married in 88. Sure. And then first son was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and things like that. So I had to, to earn money. Right. And... Um, to, to, I only could offer guitars in the, pri in the middle price range. Mm, right. And the easiest way 
to offer them was through shops. Ah, yes. right. Okay. So I have to sell them to shops and have to give a discount. Right. So, uh, and I was busy, busy, busy. Right. And I learned a lot handcrafting, but there was not the time to make brain enough for a really to reach the highest level that you instrument. wanted. Right. Yes. So because it takes time to yeah. like experiment and yes. you just had to like make instruments yes. to make money. Right? And I, looking, I was looking for uh, contact to professors and uh, uh, teachers and so on with guitar. And mu musicians, always musicians. Right. Yes. And uh, at the beginning of the uh, end of the 80s, uh, the border went open um, from the eastern western part of Germany. Sure. Yes. And in the eastern part of Germany, this is uh, the source of the German guitar building ah, okay. in the Vogtland uh, around Magnerkirchen. Ah, yes. okay. And every of the Western German guitarists went, went there wah, to <laughs> meet these guys who built guitars like Weisgerber, uh, ah. in, the, in the tradition of Weisgerber and so on. Right. Yes. Okay. Searching for instruments and so And I was standing here looking around. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no one is coming to me. So uh, at that point, I decided to uh, start making steel steel guitars. Ah, okay. My own design, my own thinking of sound. Sure. And uh, at that time, steel steel guitars were at the beginning of the 90s. It was very popular here. Right. Very good players. And it was really popular. And uh, I tried to find a, 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 a small uh, slot where I can right, live yeah. <laughs> with it. And so, at that time, I I left a bit this, the classical guitar. Sure. But uh, this rests about maybe four or five years. Okay. Um, Not a long time, really. At that time, and I. Uh, um, I lived further with a steel string guitar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sure. But then I um, thought back about the classical and then I had uh, the, um, how to say, I was brave enough sure. to say, I, I talked to my, to my co-partner, to Uli Albert, right. and I said, I, w I want to create a classical Spanish guitar in my way. Yeah. Okay. He said, okay, you have to do some preparations, but do it. Sure. I, we have the time. Yes, yeah. it would be. It, it works. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I started to use uh, high glue. Uh, mm. I started to use some uh, kind of uh, manufacturing the things like the Grenadian guitar makers yes, or okay. guitar makers did. Because high glue, you wouldn't use that in the factories before. And, and before not. Right. Before really not. Uh, in, in our area, uh, high glue means bone glue, yes. Right. And uh, uh, first to to recognize that it's something different, something quite different. Right. Yes. Uh, it was a process to to go from this to this. Yes. Ah, they, right. they are uh, just different. Uh, sure. And just use high glue and to work with it. It's not uh, really not easy because you have to warm up. Sure. In, in Granada, it's warm enough. Right. You don't have warm to warm up so much. Right. Yes, but here you have to warm up everything. Yeah. Okay. You have uh, just take, pay attention a lot on the humidity uh, here uh, because changing right. of uh, the seasons. Right. Winter, spring, summer. Uh, when you work with high glue, uh, this is uh, very sensitive. I see the perfect temperature yeah. and everything. Yeah. The temperature yeah. and the humidity and everything. And what is uh, very important, um, the uh, industrial glues, if you fit something together, uh, it glues anyway. Ooh. But the high glue, if the fitting is not perfect, Ah, you can put it. It just falls apart. Yes. No, okay. uh, you, you have to uh, to become better in, in handcrafting ah, okay. things. More yes. exact. More yeah. exact. Yes. Sure. And uh, then uh, I started my way. Maybe it was ninety four, and so, but I was not so successful. Sure. As with my traditional guitars, but it developed and developed. I changed my model. I changed the bracing. Right. Um, many, many things I, I tried. 
the sound of my guitar, I think it was, if you played metal for me, for right. example, it, it was becoming so like I think it was good. Right. And also the people, uh, for example, Rolf bought some guitars from me oh, at that yeah. time. <laughs> so a bit satisfied he was. With yeah, me. sure. Yes. And uh, then uh, I tried to develop this, um, but um, in the mid of the 2000s, I thought that my guitars were better than people think. Sure. Okay. And I, for me, there was too less uh, appreciation. Yes. Yeah. And I was very disappointed. Right. So uh, there were one, two things. One thing was when I was in uh, at the GFA. Um, sure. They don't take too care about my tra traditional guitar. <laughs> so I had three possibilities: to lose my, to, to left my job, right. uh, to go a second time to the GFA and show my guitars again, right. uh, and the third thing is uh, to find something special. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to find something special. Uh, uh, Bettina, my wife, uh, we are now we are together uh, since uh, 43 years. Wow. And uh, she was always on my side. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she said, you, you, you must make a guitar what they hit from the chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Do everything you can. <laughs> and she gave me a uh, uh, power yeah. to create something. Yes. Wow. And um, the, many, many years before, some years before, um, I met uh, Gernot Wagner first time sure. and he said, Tony, if you want to make double top guitars, I will show you everything you can. Well, I, I can, yeah. I, I know. I can I show you everything you can make wrong. <laughs> I said, oh Gernot, I never will do this stuff. stuff. <laughs> this is not a guitar. Uh, this is a monster and I want to make traditional guitars. <laughs> At that time it was. Right. It was maybe years before or something like right. this. And then... Uh, then after GFA. After this GFA, <laughs> I thought, I have to do something special. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to work with uh, this uh, synthetic materials, mm -hmm. what is uh, common with the uh, double top guitars. Yeah. And I've figured out something where I use my hard glue right. and also wood inside, uh, wood layers inside and so on. Uh, and uh, the I, told it, I told it to Gernot, and he said, I don't know, but it's yours, try it. Yes, and yeah. I tried it, and yes, then it needs two years more, and then it was coming like a bomb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was very long in my... Uh, in the development, uh, yeah. In devel devel development and also in talking now. Yeah, <laughs> so oh, no, this is great, this is great. Way. So you had this moment with your guitars where all of a sudden they, they blew up, and not just popularity, but I assume also when you started playing the ones you were making, you were getting closer to that idea of the sound you were looking for um, with the, this new design. Like all of a sudden it made sense to you or um, how did that happen? During the whole period of my building from the beginning, it was there was an, a development, but not a straight development. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, Rolf Eichinger, from whom I, I told, he, he said that I uh, fix ideas and do it very fast. Mm. He said I would uh, develop very fast. Sure. But in my uh, idea, it was not fast. <laughs> that was so not much fast enough. Uh, going down and up and down. <clears throat> I'm... I, really not able to play classical guitar. I had never uh, education for this. Mm. So uh, I, I, with my s silly methods, I have to compare guitars, um, for example, in Rolf Eichinger's shop and uh, also in, in Cologne at that time was a very famous guitar shop, uh, Fiatman Guitars. Oh. He had from Hauser, uh, sure. Hauser one, two, one or two, maybe, maybe three, yes. Uh, 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 Robert Rock was very sure. high at that time, uh, 
Ramirez, Contreras, Bernabe, every of these high class makers, right. and sometimes he had old Spanish guitars. And uh, so he invited me many times to come with a mirror <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and to look uh, and to play the guitars and so mm -hmm. on. And that brought me also a lot further. So all of these instruments you were examining at this shop sort of helped you get closer to that ideal sound with your own instruments. Yes, yes I, I could see and feel what this big masters, these great masters, what they are doing <clears throat> and how uh, I think uh, very uh, important is how the gu guitar feels if you take it in your hand. Ah, okay. Yes. And um, also the, the different weight of the guitar, for example, uh, the feeling, how it is. There was one uh, uh, moment at that shop, Fiatman in Cologne, uh, I opened the case of a guitar and it makes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Um, maybe it was a uh, uh, Beido guitar, okay. but it was yeah. very, uh, it wanted to sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, um, that brought me just near to, to have a concept what is important. Sure. What is important uh, for a good guitar? Right. Yes. I think at that guitars, what I saw, uh, I had the feeling that it was fit together uh, with so much uh, exact, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Sure. And uh, they, it feels like a, a cast iron. Sure. Made from one piece. Made like this. Ah, okay. And uh, <clears throat> and what I saw uh, saw also that uh, inside there is no break, that everything is even. Ah, okay. Uh, every fitting makes it like a uh, uh, cast iron. Right. That is from one piece. Sure. Yes. Okay. And that was uh, sort of a similarity you saw between the different instruments, even though from different makers. There was a different, of course, right. and it sounds different. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, right. and the most uh, expressing, uh, impressing instruments for me were uh, when I looked inside uh, that they were like like this. What right. I told it looked yes. like it was all one piece, and uh, there was figured out for for me um, instruments of Marie Montero, of course, for sure, yes, and Daniel Friedrich. Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> great, <laughs> amazing worker, yes, yes, and uh, so I was training to become closer to, like, this. Closer to yeah. this, yes. And these were the instruments that many of the concert artists around that time were playing on, too, like Rucks and Friedrichs, and yes, and all these. the all the, uh, the the great guitar players right. that played instrument from that, and you hear the you, you uh, interesting is. I, I uh, watched really a lot of concerts. I was exhibiting at a lot of guitar festivals and I, I was in nearly every concert sure. uh, to hear these uh, guitars. And um, the great thing was uh, that the guitars sound in an audience very, very similar to when I play the right. guitar by myself. Ah, okay. it, the guitars filled the room. Mm. Yes, they they sounded in the audience as compact as they sound when I sit behind them. Right. Wow. No, uh, 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 the sound has to be like a like a ball, mm. and this ball is sent to the audience. Right, right. It doesn't fall apart. And that's yes. a goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> and this is what, what I tried uh, what I tried to reach. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the the, uh, the problem came then that there is for me there was a limit. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I think my guitars were good uh, but not better right. than this guitars. Maybe not as good as Daniel Friedrich's guitars of course and uh, Robert Rax and so on, right. uh, I, but I'm, I was on the way. Right. And uh, then also I uh, 
uh, heard the first double top guitars, ah, the first sure. lattice guitars, um, and I was really amazed from this. Yeah. Right. And uh, what a full sound and so on. And uh, by the way, uh, the, my first idea about a kind of double top I had in the late 80s. Oh, yeah. I experimented yeah. with this, but it was just a much more rough construction, like it is the construction from uh, Matthias Damann or uh, Gerner. Sure. This is really uh, just very uh, sensitive and uh, very well thought about. Yeah. This is a, a right. fantastic construction, yes. Sure. And uh, I, I took this idea, what I had, um, to do everything with uh, natural materials, right. but in the way how uh, Matthias and uh, Gernot Wagner uh, found this kind of double top. Yes. Right, okay. And uh, this was what I uh, started then in uh, 2006. Sure. And we were, you were starting around this time for more players to be picking up your guitars, or but, but really no one that was very famous playing your instruments yet, correct? Or? At that time, nobody. Right. Nobody. It, sure. In another case, yes, uh, I had some famous steel string players from that time uh -huh. when I bought, made steel strings. I had a very, very, very good relationship to many of these good players. Right. Exactly. And uh, also uh, people who played uh, fusion music, uh, classical guitars with a cutaway, with a big cutaway, with 24 frets and something right. like this. <laughs> yeah. uh, they uh, they are acting yeah. <laughs> without yeah. guitars, yes. And uh, <clears throat> but in the final, that that was not my not the end of my way. What I uh, imagined for myself. Sure. Uh, right. My imagination was uh, to make a really good classical guitar. Right. This was the the aim. Right. And uh, <clears throat> then I uh, had the idea of this kind of double top. Right, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, stripes in between, it's a lot of work, but <laughs> I did it, and uh, and eventually with needs... balsa wood, right, rather than other um, materials. First, that you tried. first uh, it was a, a cedar double top with cedar stripes inside. Ah, okay. This was the first, the first three, four, five guitars, and uh, then I tried one with the Nomex, mm -hmm. um, but I used the Nomex with a high glue, ah, okay. not with PU glue. And it works. It works until today. The player is very happy with the guitar. Sure. Uh, okay. And uh, but I showed it to uh, some guitarists, and I didn't tell that it's a different construction. Sure. And all they say this is better. That was my system. Right. And I decided, okay, I have two reasons to make this because uh, my standing alone <laughs> right at first yeah. and if they all say it, it sounds better then it fits better to you right yeah, to me absolutely yes. yeah and so I, I tried to develop but uh, that was not uh, the, the end of the line uh, because it needs more minimum two years before the great masters of guitar uh, mm. checked recognized me yes yes of course, uh, of course. some of them they were I think they were uh, they knew me sure and uh, but they were not sure right if I I'm, I'm able to develop or to make a, just a better guitar and so right on. and uh, then uh, it was two years later it was maybe two, 2008 2008 or nine, um, I, I I'm normally very shy, uh, not to go to the guitarist and bring the guitar uh, right. be, be, because I um, uh, I'm a bit anxious about that they uh, throw me out <laughs> yeah. or something yeah. like this. Oh. Yes. And we can uh, all relate to that. So, but I yeah. took all my uh, my. Power inside, <laughs> and I wrote an email. Maybe this email, maybe email was it uh, to uh, Scott Tennant. Sure, we we had contact. We had a relation, good relationship at that time, and I said I have two guitars prepared: one spruce guitar, 
Um, he was playing at that time the Spruce guitar, uh, 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 Daniel Friedrich guitar. Sure. I said, uh, I'm in Hamburg. Um, you are concerting there with the quartet. Uh, uh, if you have time, I'm exhibiting. Uh, please come and try my instrument. Right. Yes. And he came just directly. Yeah. <laughs> he was playing first the Spruce guitar, okay. And then he took the Zeta guitar and he was playing, playing, playing. And then he asked about the price, and I told him the price and said, okay, if you are really interested, I can make a better price for you. Uh, and he said, just, I'm interested. <laughs> <gasps> My God! <laughs> <laughs> it was a shock. What an amazing feeling that must be. <laughs> what an amazing feeling. Uh, by the way, for example, uh, now you know, Alvaro Pieri is also playing yes. my guitar since about five or six years. Right. And uh, when I had the first, I heard the first concert from him, yes, mm. I was uh, completely off. I was hit down. <laughs> and I thought during the whole concert to pluck only one note of my guitar, that would be wow. <laughs> <laughs> How but, uh, that would maybe feel. 20 years, nearly, nearly 20 years later, yeah. the point came and he tested my guitars <laughs> and he ordered one. Yes. But by the way, you saw him. <laughs> yeah, what an amazing feeling that must have been, yeah, too. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Scott Temp was uh, the starting. Right. Uh, on, on, the, on one side, and during the same time, um, I met Hubert Keppel. Ah, oh, sure. And um, also Thomas Kirchhoff and Del Kavana. Right. And uh, a student of Thomas um, bought one of my first of this double top guitars. Yeah, okay. Right. And then he. So we have to go to the concert room, to the concert hall. We test it again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we tested it the whole evening. And right. So uh, this was here in, in Germany. Uh, right. The start. Uh, right. And in, 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 in the US, uh, it was a start with uh, Scott Tennant and then the Cam Geyser, uh, Matthew Grief, and, right. so, and of course, John Isbin. Right. Yes. Uh, I think it's interesting that, you know, it all sort of happened around the same time. And I'm sure, like, while these players helped, your guitars were at a new level that everyone was noticing when they played them. It didn't matter who played what, but when they picked it up, they were like, wow, I, I've got to have one of these. Right? Maybe the feeling that all of us sort of still have today when we try your instruments. You, you, like... you, you cannot imagine what, what at that time uh, was happening inside of me. Right. <laughs> uh, when Scott Tennant sent me an email, mm -hmm. he said, Sharon Isbin will contact you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable for me. Right. She sent me an so a kind email it was really really nice yes and she ordered the guitar for me wow. yes and uh, we have uh, just he, she's playing my guitar still now right like most of the players at, from that time they play yeah. my guitar still yeah yes. sure and uh, i i don't know who, to whom i talked uh, i i said um, if I have such high class players for such a long time like Daniel Friedrich it had sure yes it, uh, during his life right. right then I have made something right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. it must have been hard during that time to change anything about your instruments too right or or did you sort of ignore it how how, how did you go about that because no I think uh, that, that was not uh, um, the development of my guitars. It started of my very high class guitars. It started maybe around in '94, uh, around mm. this, and it was a really development. Uh, it was very curvy. Ah, sure. uh, I tried to make the guitars just very sensitive, very light. Mm, that right. it's very explosive. Right, that feeling of like you were subscribing yeah, 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 the guitar yeah. case. And, so. I, I make it sometimes, make them too light. Ah, yes. okay. They were very deep in the sound. Mm. And, uh, then I go more stiff, more stiffer and stiffer. Sure. And then there came a point, uh, the, the most heavy guitar, it was 
two kilos maybe sure with double sides and uh, everything very stiff right yes. <laughs> and i saw this is this is also not uh, not the aim this is not the end sure yeah. and then i uh, thought about this kind of double top right so i had learned in the past how the body has to work mm. yes and i went back a bit not so heavy but very solid ah, okay. solid yes and planted this double top fixed the double top right uh, on the guitar yeah and uh, it, it worked from the first moment wow i found the right mix the right combination the right combination uh, not comparable with the guitar with the guitars now uh, now i have many uh, years of uh, experience sure. with this so we can fine tuning we can yeah. fine tuning there is uh, also uh, in, in the years there is no revolution uh, happened right. also this was for me not it was a, a quant jump yes sure but uh, not a revolution because the rest of my guitar it's the same than 20 years ago right it's uh, just yeah. the, just same. the same. same yeah uh, i was really i was on, i was on this way yeah. and the only thing w was left was this <laughs> card stuck yeah. on my double top yes oh, can you tell me a little bit about what you, you were telling me before about the guitar breathing and the yeah. back and 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 how you want it to like uh, this experiment that you did with the lights ah, yes um okay um <clears throat> Uh, it, there is a method to uh, visualize uh, how the guitar moves. Right. If uh, it will be uh, in, influenced by a player or... Uh, sure. I had a friend, uh, he had a good idea about this. Um, uh, you make the room without light. Right. Put a small motor on the bridge. A motor. A, yeah. A electric a motor. Electric motor. Which yeah. you can trim. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. To to get different frequencies. Okay. You like attach it to the bridge somehow. Yes. Okay. I attach it to the bridge, and you can maybe do one frequency, and you 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 take a stroboscope lamp okay. in the dark sure. room, and you shine with a stroboscope lamp in uh, the frequency what is very close to that what the motor does. Okay. Uh, and there is a phase shifting. Ah, okay. And you can see what the guitar makes. Right. Yes. And it's like you, slow motion in some way. Like, like slow motion, like right. in the discotheque when <laughs> this yeah, yeah, yeah. stroboscope uh, is doing. Okay. And uh, I saw many, many interesting things. Mm. Um, and I think for, for, for my way or for my understanding, uh, the sound starts with a string. The top is moving. Right. Maybe moving into the guitar, right. pressing the air, right. and the rest is reflex, reflexing it and throw it out. I see. And uh, so uh, the body has to be stiff, for my idea, but not completely stiff. Right. So it, it doesn't it stop the sound. Yes. You want it to bounce. That, there are other systems where this is that the body is very, very stiff. Right. Completely stiff. Uh, this is another kind of guitar. Right. Yes. This is also very uh, successful. This right. is, has a high quality. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. But this is not my way. Right. Uh, my guitar, I saw this in, in this uh, motion, um, <clears throat> that the whole guitar is pumping. Right. Yeah? It's got some movement to it. It's a movement yeah. there. Well, it's been so good to learn about just this journey that you've taken and all the ways that you've changed and developed your instruments. But I think one thing that's really interesting and special about you and, and, and maybe the way uh, a lot of the, the German luthiers uh, work together is that you are really open with not only sharing what your influences were, but also um, sharing with... with uh, other luthiers and other mm -hmm. uh, communicating about uh, about things and, and raising um, raising the level overall of, of, of everyone. Yeah. Uh, where, where does this come from? At, at the at the beginning, when I started my uh, my education uh, and the first years in, here in our area, the luthiers they had all their own secret. Mm, sure. There was 
just secret. If you visit a colleague, uh, the, the workshop was clean, <laughs> clean, really right. clean. And there was not uh, much um, communication. Right. There was, there was not much communication about uh, right. it, 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 from one to the other, Lucia. Sure. But I have learned in my life that I have learned that I learned a lot by different makers right. with communication. Right. And they learned me to make a good guitar. It's, right. it's one big part in, 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 in uh, my development in my life. Right. One sure. is to search, always find new ideas, right. to see more uh, guitars and test them and feel them and so on. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is uh, to communicate uh, with colleagues Right. And, and they learned me a lot. We, sure. we learn from each other now. Right. And this is, I think this is the much better way uh, to develop. It's, it's sure. for musicians the same. Yeah. And uh, for a guitar maker, of course, uh, the development of the guitar uh, is, can, can only... It, it, it's, it's not... Nobody by himself is able to create... Uh, a masterpiece without help from <laughs> right <laughs> to, to have a development yes yes uh, there is a, a development and um, <clears throat> I think that is very uh, very important and there are uh, for example for, for of course uh, Rolf Eichinger what I told you sure. um, uh, and um, also Gernot Wagner sure. who taught me just a lot uh, right. when I when I have a question I found him and yeah. he is explaining you the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, a great, uh, uh, like a friendship. Right. And uh, uh, another guy who, whose name is uh, Dragan Mussolin, he was my first teacher in the workshop of Dieter Hopf. Ah, okay. uh, he learned me to, to work very, very sensitive, to, mm. to work exact. Yes. Right. I, I lost it during that time. Because I had to make a lot of guitars, right. cheap guitars, to be able to just to survive, yes. to survive, to right. survive. Yes, and uh, then, but I remember <laughs> that yeah. right, to uh, become uh, per perfect and perfect. Sure, this is uh, more and more yeah. of a specialist. More, yeah. Yes, yes. Wow. Well, thank you so much. I think this was such a wonderful conversation, and just like. Um, uh, great to hear so much more about your story and, and who you are as a luthier in person. So. I have to thank you. <laughs> it was nice to meet you and uh, a nice speech. And uh, yeah, so awesome. Maybe if it maybe if it helps some young colleagues uh, yeah. to develop or yeah. to uh, get in contact with yeah our luthiers instrument around makers. Yes. Uh, and it it if it helps. To bring the guitar further, right. that is that is the, the the last aim of all. Right. Uh, to bring the guitar further, because right. the guitar is uh, it, it made a, just a great development in the last 30, 40 years. Yeah, That's it's surprising, unbelievable. Right. Uh, but the acceptance of the guitar in the whole musician scene, uh, right. there is yeah, some more started. possible. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> just starting. Uh, yeah. Also with uh, composers. Uh, they, that they are interested to right. pose for guitars. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that players are able to make chamber music with uh, with other instruments, right. with, with flute, with the violin, and so on. And uh, yeah. that the guitar is on the same level. Right. Yes. And it needs more time, I think. Yeah. But we are on a good way. Yeah. And luthiers help that process too. That's for making instruments. That's our, yes. that's our profession. That's uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Well, great. We're, we're joined here by Felix, uh, your son, and uh, also a guitar builder, but you didn't initially start with guitar building, right? Yeah. Um, it was like, uh, I think like uh, before five years, and then I started with uh, to, to study uh, canonical technique sorry, oh, okay. um, in a city near here. Um, but I also uh, was often here and helped my dad in the garden or building some uh, furniture sure. and stuff like that. 
and then more and more saw um, this and what he's doing here and uh, I thought Ooh, that's also very cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah well wow. they just make some um, little jobs and stuff yeah mm -hmm. um, and then you decided at some point that you wanted to build your own instruments. Mm -hmm. and right? Yeah, at, at, uh, one day I um, asked him uh, okay, if I could get a job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, I, if he can get it all. You must have been really happy to hear that he wanted to build guitars, I, right? I, I have to, uh, to complete it a bit. Um, um, five years before when he uh, entered uh, the high school he was also asking uh, oh. to to make an uh, education in my workshop and i said no 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 <laughs> no go to your school sure make your uh, high school finish right uh, and then there's a reason because i i started uh, after the 10th class mm. making guitars and all the other pupils uh, in, in, around me, they uh, had 13 years school. I they, see. Okay. They had the high school finish. You wanted so, him to finish his education. Yeah. And it, no, it's, 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 it's about thinking. Mm. Your thinking is, it develops a lot in these three years. Right. To understand, to uh, imagine right. how things fit together, uh, logical thinking and everything, Force. yes. Right. Um, and so, uh, if he was coming five years later, I had less work with him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have uh, to, to, to uh, explain from uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. Adam, uh, yeah. He understands. Yes. Right. And uh, it was good Sometimes. that he studied <laughs> first this uh, economic mm -hmm. education, or how you call yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, because it was very interesting what he told me, but uh, it, it's more uh, a computer writing uh, mm. uh, desk table job. Right. Not right. working with yeah. that. But he, I, I knew it from when he was very, very... He has to do something with his hand. Right. Ah, okay. This, it was very uh, important, I think, for his way. I see. I never pressed him to make, to make guitars. <laughs> yeah. make guitar yeah. like a, he came, it was his own decision. Right. Oh, that's why. I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. okay. Well, it's great. And then, um, so you obviously uh, have learned so much from your dad, but you must have some of your own ideas and your own um, thoughts as towards the sound. Do you find yourself agreeing with, um, with each other about sound? Or are there some areas where you feel like, you know, some of your own interests? Um, of, of course, uh, it's it's also our own interest and our own um, idea. But sure. um, the the most guitar I've heard and the most guitar uh, that I had to do in my life right. now was the guitar of my father. Yeah? Right, right. So um, uh, that's the 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 sound that I like. Right. And um, edu yeah, ed educated the most about it and know the most about it, and so um, I I like that kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, well, you started from such a great point because, like, your father was mm -hmm. saying that uh, when you started in a factory or like the instruments that you were hearing were like not very high level instruments. But from the moment you were born, <laughs> you also you, know, you were able to hear like high quality instruments and know what that sound is hmm. is like. Yeah. So yeah, I have to say so, two <laughs> things uh, in between. Uh, I have two yeah. sons. Right. Uh, Yannick sure. was about four and a half years older, and he uh, had in his youth and when he was a child, he got more from the. The pressure and the pain and the uh, disappointness uh, sure. from me uh, <laughs> when I was fighting and struggling to to go on a level. Yes, uh, and sure. when he uh, was able to think and see and do, I was on another level. Yes. Right, I see. Uh, this uh, being the younger son. Yes, yes, yes. he's the younger son. So uh, Yannick decided uh, to be become a teacher. Right, this is his 
thing. He sure. was never uh, had never the idea to uh, make something by himself. Right. Uh, uh, he, he, with, with yeah, with your hands. Yes, yes. Not 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 only by hands. Uh, to establish a workshop, for example. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Okay, sure. Uh, he saw how I was fighting. Yes. Yeah. Like yes. How uh, difficult it can be. Mm. Right. And uh, Felix uh, was in a better situation. Yeah. At that time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, uh, and Yanni helps you in, in other ways too. With, yes, yes with he's, communication. he's doing our conversation, most of the yeah. conversation, uh, emails, uh, he's doing invoices, the orders. He makes uh, it strictly, uh, sure. not uh, like Mike. <laughs> 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 I, always, I always write much, much by hand. And ah, sometimes true. I cannot read what I wrote, uh, what I uh, <laughs> wrote down, wrote uh, down. jot down, uh, and so on. And he does it, yes, it, uh, more clear. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, another thing uh, was um, what you asked about his own ideas. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it was very necessary what you told me um, before we started. When mm -hmm. you when you asked about uh, the education here, mm -hmm. uh, you said. I don't want only to be the son of Antonius oh, Müller. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to go my own way. Yeah, sure. And um, the second thing was how I told um, that he had the experience with studying, right. uh, that he can um, appreciate what a handworking job is. Right. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, so, so this was, uh, I think, two th two things, and uh, then I had. Two things, what for me was very important, I said, please go to a really, really good guitar teacher and take lessons for some years. Yeah, sure. That you are able to hear and to plug a string right. and see the quality, right. if it is a good or not a good quality. And he did it. He's yeah. a good player in between now. Sure. And uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Better, better than myself. Yeah. Better than myself. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think this was uh, very important. We, we made a plan right. how, how it would work uh, because father and son can be difficult sometimes, it, right? Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was okay. Yes. There is the idea of, of this sound. And uh, I wanted to reach that because of uh, the things that I uh, said. But at the moment, it's more uh, quality uh, even there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, sure. I want the, the the basic that uh, the the basic of, of my guitar is is there. And right. at this point, I am <laughs> like uh, yeah. I'm uh, at the moment not in the the this uh, high thing like ah sure. my sound. Uh, will be like this and this. So I'm, right. I'm also thinking about it, but the, the basic things I try to um, do the best way I can do, right. um, then I, I grow more. So right. because of that, the goal at the moment is more like, okay, um, my, my guitar uh, should go into the the way of my father, yeah, or sure. because I've, I've learned this and I try to do this uh, good as I can, and then in, uh, if I if I can this perfectly or uh, at a high level, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. then then I can um, develop more in, in things where I can uh, be more experimental and, and stuff, yeah. Yes, so sure. It's also, so that. Uh, I, uh, my my father uh, sent me to to uh, other workshops and other um, shops and stuff where I can hear different guitars and different sounds yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so that's also important um, for me. But um, it's yeah at, at the moment too. Um, I I don't have that much experience that I can say okay this time I build a guitar like. Ramirez, and this time yes, I built yes, a guitar yeah. like, um, or the guitar sound like um, Boucher and stuff. Yeah, right. Um, right. I, I could maybe build a, kid, a guitar that looks like this, right. but um, to to reach that sound, 
Um, I think it's it's yeah, it's not uh, it's not really uh, it's nonsense, yeah, because yeah, I got to 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 make the the basics very good, and then right. I can uh, look what what uh, what's my uh, idea of right style. your style and well i mean yeah, I, yeah. I think you're you're being very modest as well though because your guitars are incredible and many people are already playing them and you have a wait list already so uh but that's that's amazing to hear that you know you you're trying to always constantly improve and that you feel that there's like all of us with what we do there, there's a long ways to go yeah right so. but this is i find this is a very wise uh, decision for a, a young guy yeah uh, so I have to learn so much about the basic yes. and to settle me down on a good bass yeah. and then I can yes. uh, sure. discover the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he is young. Yes. Yeah. Oh. We established a workshop with two people, uh, right. Uli Albert, yes. my colleague and me. And uh, after this we had some students who were in our workshop sure. learning and so on. And then we uh, we had an, uh, a workman, an employee in our workshop for about. With Uli together, I was more than thirty years sure. in the workshop, and uh, our employee he learned everything from us, from Uli and from me. Yes, right. he was twenty three years in our workshop. Wow. Unfortunately, both of these guys passed away, mm. and so I I was standing alone. So, right. and this is the 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 the, the greatest pleasure that there is. Coming a young guy, yeah. <laughs> can I? Can, I can you teach me? Yeah. <laughs> and I can give it to right. him. I'm I'm uh, spreading yes. to, to give everything because these guys I gave, right? They are gone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and wow. Yeah. This is uh, uh, like a big present for me. Yeah. Yes. And I'm happy. What an incredible <laughs> feeling that was. Yeah. It's an incredible feeling. Yes. It's good. Well, that's wonderful. Great to hear more about you and your guitar building, and uh, we look forward to seeing so much um, more about you in the near future, too. So, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Cool. Trying to think of what to say for the uh, transition into all of a sudden, in the video, Felix just appears. <laughs> I should, I should uh, edit something where, like, smoke appears. <laughs> I'll try it. Right. I'll spend all night just trying to get <laughs>